All right, guys, so this is the Tektronix 2235 that Brian got. He uh, gave me the other day. Nice meeting, Brian. And um, I've left it on since last night because it does have a little bit of a display to come up. Or excuse me, not display, delay for the display to come up. Um, from what I can find on the internet, I think it's from 1984. They did make an A model. They did make a military model. Uh, I think they made a, a ton of these. Um, so I think this one was probably one of the more common uh, 100 megahertz oscilloscopes from the 80s. It actually really doesn't look 80s to me. It looks 90s, but... Tektronix kind of kept their styling cue pretty normal throughout the years. I've had three or four different Tektronix oscilloscopes, maybe five. Almost all of them had a, a power supply problem. Um, there used to be a guy that would come down to Phoenix to the ham fest, and he'd have rows of different ones. All of them would probably be about $20. And I don't know who he worked for, but, like, you know, he, he got them from his work. He had tons and tons and tons of them. And uh, I, I don't know too much about if he tried to fix them or whatever, but they all had little post-it notes on them, like what was wrong with them or, you know, if they didn't have anything wrong with them. And one of the ones that I bought, I got from him and then... I had a friend that bought one from him and only wanted some accessory thing that went on the back. I forget what it was. And uh, the guy gave me that one. And then I ended up with another one in a trade. Gave away one to somebody else. So I, I've had a few of them in and out of my hands. And I bought one when I first got licensed from a Russian guy in Sacramento for like 150 bucks and then apparently that was a really popular one and I uh, sold it on mistake um, it was similar to this one I, I don't know it was it was called the digital storage scope um, and it had you could push a sequence of buttons and make this little tektronics wizard come out on a skateboard and skate across the screen uh, I don't know what model it was, but it was well known. And when I went to sell it at a ham fest, this guy wanted it really bad. And uh, I didn't know that was the reason why, really. Uh, I knew that it did that, but I didn't really think it was, you know, all that special. Um, what I like about this one is it's a, it's a little bit more simple. It doesn't have all the crazy stuff on the trigger. I think this looks kind of more like the ones that um, when I went to college for TV repair I think this one looks more like the ones that we used in our lab. Um, but um, they are very complicated really when you think about it. Um, so I'm not an expert on these, but usually what happens is if everything's working right and you have the trigger set here, you'll have a line across the screen. Um, the trigger here has a few functions on this one. Let's see if I can zoom this in. thing is uh, spring loaded so it's really hard um, it says SGL sweep P underscore P auto and then it says like TV line TV field and then it says normal I guess this is considered auto when we put it on normal we won't see anything so it's on normal, but if we adjust 
the level. Well, see the little LED light up. I'm going to turn it right to where it flashes for a second. And then if I just touch it, it picks up something. It's got both. Uh, let me turn off both. You know, I just went on channel one. Um, so there's a test point on this. It's weird because it's actually not showing up. Uh, I'm going to leave it on 10x. I, I like to always have the probe attenuated. Okay, let's see if we can adjust it. Okay. So, no squares on these won't always look normal. And there's a little spot on your probe to adjust your probe. Now, as you change the volts per division on these, you see already it's not completely square. You see how we go further? Let me uh, adjust the time base. We can get in there a little better. So, it it is kind of hard to get them completely square. And I don't know if that's a condition of the probe or the scope. It's probably actually the scope. Um, that's probably why this thing was tossed in the dumpster. Just because, you know... It's accurate enough for us, but maybe whoever was, uh, you know, wherever it was at, Intel or, you know, one of these uh, places in Phoenix. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a little deal in here. This is a... Uh, <coughs> this is a different probe than it's different than what it says in the manual um, so anyway um, the the manual uh, God, these DMR people. What what is wrong with these people on DMR to where, like, I, I know we've all discussed this, but seriously, why don't they ever check their audio? They just get on to some worldwide talk group, and they have no idea if they even sound okay. And then here's the other thing. A lot of the people on DMR tell them they sound good when they sound really bad because they don't want to uh, offend them. Uh, so anyway, the, the probe kit says it's a PP90. And the... Uh, it's a PP150, which still says it is a... 100 megahertz, 5, 6 megahertz. So at, on 10x, it supposedly can read 600 volts peak to peak. Uh, I would not want 600 volts on this thing. Uh, I have some of these. Uh, I have a hand tech, actually. But, um, so usually in here, they'll tell you how to calibrate it. Uh... It just says it can be. I had a kit somewhere it goes through on how to calibrate it, but um, there's lots of information on the internet about it. And uh, come on, focus, focus, focus. 
inside of there, they give you a little um, plastic tool. It does have a metal piece on the end. But anyway, I'll show you it in action. So, a lot of scopes will have that clip, a little eyelet clip. You don't have to pull the piece off of the end. Um, if you have one of these style of probes and you don't know about this, it pulls off. That way you can probe with it. Otherwise, you'd have to, you know, pull back the hook. So, this thing has a little thing where you stick it in there, which I don't like. If you bump that thing, you're going to break the tip off of it, trust me. Okay, so you take this probe here, and you adjust it while it's on. Maybe we can go the other way. You just get it as even as possible. And what you'll notice, though, and this is why I think it's the scope, is I change this, okay? It starts to do this angled thing. We have a completely flat top, but the other part is not normal. And we adjust it like this. So, certain probes will be really bad like that. And you'll take a probe off of another scope, um, and it might act differently. Uh, I have a bunch of probes somewhere from really, really old Tektronix scopes. Some of them uh, are missing stuff, and I'll have to uh, take a look at them later. But um, basically, for me, I just want to get it like that, as close as possible, and then... You can't even see anything there. I prefer the trigger to be on auto because otherwise, if I put it on normal, I kind of have to manually trigger it. So you watch, if I put it back on normal, it, it disappears. I have to adjust my knob and I'm minutely adjusting it and it can't find it. So I just put it back on auto. It's just so much easier. Okay. So, what I want is to get it as normal as possible when it's a little bit larger. Okay. And we can go really far. We move our position and just look at it. But, it's off a little bit. It's not going to matter for me. So, uh, we can, you know, nudge it a bit. Then we move our position back to here. And then, um... As long as, uh... You consider each square. Um, with this probe here, it says that the probe adjust is 500 millivolts peak to peak at one kilohertz. Okay. So, <coughs> so basically, each of these squares would be 500 millivolts or I guess 0.5 volts half a volt so if you had it set like this and you measured something and it was two squares high then you know you got one volt <coughs> So that's kind of how you can use this as a 
voltage measuring tool. Now, you get into the new fancy digital scopes, it already calculates it for you as well as shows you the waveform. Um, but anyway, um, these are uh, really cool because if you get one of these and you learn how to use it, you're going to figure out a lot more. When you get one of these new ones, there's too much information on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over being sick. Um, so I guess if we counted these from the time domain, we could shorten it up, I think. Mm, it doesn't change. Oh, wait, wait. I'm on the wrong one. So these two here are for channel one and two. And then this is A and B seconds per division. So the seconds is the time domain. I'm on point five, I think. Point one. Okay. <coughs> I think we have a storm coming in because it just got really dark. So, um, not really sure what all to test on this yet at this point, but, um, one of my scopes I have that I really like, this doesn't work. You go through and it basically will show you that right there and that and then after that nothing else works so like uh, if you want to look at things you can't look at it because the bandwidth is gone and they looked into fixing it I have no idea See how we go, keep going and going and going. Now, if we move this over, kind of see a little bit what we're looking at. And this keeps going, depending on how big the wave is, you know? And it goes all the way down to where you can't even see anything. So, it to me looks like everything works on it. Uh, I checked both channels. Um, we'll try it again. I didn't. I didn't actually go through everything. Okay, so this channel is actually not displaying anything now. Interesting. Oh, uh, I keep forgetting. I'm like, uh, okay. So if you put it on both channels, you'll get a line. All right, what is it set to? 20. So this channel is actually acting differently. Uh, we get a 50 millivolts or 0.5 for 10X probe. Um, they do have an invert key. I just need to make sure everything's set the same. AC. Okay. It is weird. So, I think channel 2 is bad. It's like, uh... Doesn't want to settle down. Okay. I can hear the rain. The whole thing is kind of fluttery all of a sudden. Interesting. So in the middle of doing this, it started to 
hail and snow, and I left this bicycle outside. Oh well. And you see the backyard is actually starting to turn white. Alright. Oh boy. It just like heard a whole crack of thunder. Saw the sky get dark. And uh right about at the time the oscilloscope started to go on the fritz. You see how that line is really jumpy? Uh that's the power supply. And so anyway. Uh unfortunately they just get worse and worse and worse. Eventually they won't turn on too, so uh it's possible that the longer this is on, the worse it gets. And they probably trashed it. So if you don't use it for very long, it probably, um, it's probably fine for a while. Um, but, uh, I'll have to open it up and take a look and see how hard it would be to get to the capacitors. And I'm not going to have any of the capacitors that it needs. Um, they're usually glued in too, they're really a pain. But, um, it did, it did suddenly kind of get a little noisy. It's strange, because, um, I mean, I have to go back and look at the video, but I don't remember it being like that. One thing I did do that, uh, maybe uh, because it's on auto. Okay, it's not auto. Well, that's a little more stable. So usually as you get to the higher speeds. <coughs> <coughs> Boy, it's, it's really coming out. <coughs> I don't mind the weather, but I don't want hail damage. And sometimes we end up with that. Alright, let's leave it like there. That's normal. <coughs> so, we have a, a calibration knob here, too. We can calibrate that if it's wrong. Um, but it also has a 10x where you pull it out. Generally speaking, the scope should be good to go. You shouldn't have to use that calibration. <coughs> okay, so I have both channels on. Uh, the other one. Kind of fuzzy. So um, there's a B trigger. Which we're not messing with that. Well, there's an A and B internal, it says it's set to channel one vertical mode. I don't know. A external coupling, AC. So, rather than display both of them, we put it on channel one, that's channel one. Okay. We'll move our probe over to channel two. Um, they both say one mega ohm. That's another reason I don't like this test probe thing here. Um, they both say they're the same. 400 volt peak. Uh, 20 picofarad. 
Okay. We'll switch it to channel two. Um, we'll move this over to 0.5. Now 0.5 on the other one. Looks completely different. Let's see what it was. Channel one, that's point five. Okay, go to channel two. The so channel two um, is wrong for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure. Do the calibration. You can adjust it to that there, but um, I'll let me try calibrating the time base factor. So calibrating the time base factor um, makes it seem a little more normal. <laughs> Um, so something in this one. There's also the B delay position. I don't know if that knob down here has anything to do with how the thing's acting. We'll run it through its gamut. Okay, so there should be no delay there. Now, horizontal mode is for A. Let's see, I don't know. Some of the stuff I don't know anything about. A and B. Oh, okay. So, I might just be using it wrong. So, over here near where the trigger stuff is, I switched it from the A and B internal from channel one to channel two. And I wouldn't think you would have to switch that every time, but maybe it's supposed to be on vertical mode. But when it's on channel one, you get that, you know. So, you put it on channel two, it looks fine. Let me see if this vertical mode here um, will allow it to work on both. So when this A and B internal is set to vertical mode, it looks like it works back and forth between the two channels. Okay. Well, it's fine. So... Even a simple oscilloscope like this is too much for me, as we can tell. Um, I'm not ever going to use two channels that I can really think of. Uh, unless maybe I was like looking at the output of a stereo amplifier. Uh, but when we put both, it flashes, which is annoying. Then when we go to channel 1, it doesn't flash. It shows both. In channel 2, it does that. For channel 1. And that's vertical mode. So I'm not really sure how it's supposed to be set. I'm not sure if it has something wrong with it. And then we've got add and alt and chop, and I've never understood that. The vertical mode. Uh, you can limit the bandwidth to 20 megahertz too. There's chop. Chop shows up fine. So alt, well, I guess what does it mean? It alternates in between. And then there's add. I don't know what that means. So if we put add, then we have both. Does it show up? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe put it on chop. I don't know. I can't remember what it's supposed to be on. 
But if we were looking at two signals that were different, I don't know what it would be set to. So, anyway, there's usually a reason that they get rid of these things, though. So, if you find one in a dumpster, maybe they just threw it out because it was just too old, you know? We never know. Anyway, thank you guys for watching me blunder through a Tektronix 2235.